So bismillah alhamdulillah wassalatu wassalam ala sayyidil mursalin Muhammadin al-Amin amma ba'd. So uh, welcome uh, brother Charles uh, today I think I'm pretty excited about today's program so we'll yeah, see how it goes. I'm sure going to learn a lot from this program myself. <laughs> yeah it, it it's going to be insightful for all of us I think on I think it's like one of those videos that's like it's casting a shadow you know coming events cast their shadows so to say so i don't know if it'll be exactly this way but it's going to play out in definitely something similar it seems and allah knows best but i definitely want your opinion on this so i'm going to just play this video really and you know anytime you want to make a comment or if it's something has to do with islam or some Arabic words, I might make a comment. And then, uh, inshallah ta'ala, I think it'll be beneficial for everyone to kind of see this. Uh, so let's get started. Bismillah rahman rahim So this video is called The Blueprints of the Third Temple, Finally Revealed by Real Jews. And notice here, the spokesman of the Masih, the Messiah, is the one that's uh, speaking for most of the video so he's considered by i guess uh some group of jews oh, raelian chief rabbi now i did not know the raelians that had connected with the jews or or perhaps they were they were you know connected all along the raelians are one of the darker ufo cults mm. yeah so yeah, I mean you know, chief rabbi, I mean, Raelian chief rabbi, I, I would like to know what, you know, the, the, the uh, you know, the, the rabbis, the, the established rabbis of Israel feel about this group and this person, but this okay. is the Raelians, here they come. <clears throat> Bismillah. <clears throat> Today, more and more scientists, politicians, astronauts, as well as the Pentagon, the US Navy and national intelligence acknowledge the existence of UFOs and extraterrestrials. UFO sightings are increasing and the number of crop circles too. Meanwhile, the existence of close to 5,000 exoplanets has already been confirmed and more are being discovered each year. What does all this mean? What if all these manifestations are intended to prepare humanity for a peaceful and official contact with extraterrestrial civilizations? Could these extraterrestrials be the Elohim we have been waiting for for so long? Would they share their advanced science? And if so, how should we engage with them? The answer is to build an embassy for them, to officially and peacefully welcome them. We are ready. A significant oh, part yeah. of the plans to build There's the Raelian symbol already raised and available, which is a swastika inside of a star of David. Interesting. Okay. So Elohim, which generally they I guess traditional Jews would take it to mean God, right? Yeah, and but they, it's, it's a plural word, which is also sometimes translated as the sons of God. It's it's you know, and I just wonder if that relates to, to the, the kingly, you know, the royal we, whereas a, a monarch will refer to him or herself as we. Oh. But then they have misconstrued the we to mean the God, like, uh, so this is kind of like how the video seems to say, you know, we is kind of like, is actually a civilization. So we is one as a civilization, but it's these aliens is the we. Yeah, well, I've never actually heard it applied to a civilization, but but to a constellation of, de of deities, you know, mm -hmm. and I, I would compare it to the, the Sumerian, <laughs> is it the Sumerian or the Akkadian, I think it's the Sumerian Anunnaki, you know, who are one group of Sumerian gods. Uh, <clears throat> now, th th this person said, um, we've been waiting for the return of the Elohim for all this time. Somehow I missed that. I wasn't waiting for that. 
you know, the return of the, the Messiah, you know, is considered to, is a way different concept traditionally than the Elohim. You know, the, the Messiah is 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 a you know a, a a king of Israel, or from a Christian standpoint, uh, the, the return of Jesus Christ, and you know that, that other religions have have similar concepts of. The, the the figure the teacher or the avatar or whatever you want to call him who return at the end of this world age so but you know but this says oh yes we've been waiting for the uh, uh, for the uh, elohim all this time this is this is a, a jewish or raelian version of the anunnaki apparently now the raelians a very strange uh you know i haven't been following the, the, their history you know but uh they were written about by Jacques Vallée, the premier, our premier ufologist, in a book um, called Messengers of Deception, which was mm -hmm. talking sort of about, about the, the, uh, the, the, the UFO culture and, and, and the various quasi-religious ideas that were developing around UFOs. And uh, Ra'el, um, okay, okay, the name Ra'el is, is a combination of the Egyptian god Ra, and the Hebrew name for God, El, which oh. is, I'm sure, related to, to, to Allah. You know, mm. now this is a problem because in any traditional Judaism, the and, and in Islam, of course, as well, the the, the Egyptians re represent, you know, the forces of decadence, the forces of worldliness, even the forces of evil, and 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 to make a blend between that, you know, the, uh, a chief god of the chief original enemies of Judaism with a Jewish name of God is already profoundly subversive. Mm. Now, all I know about the Raelians was at one time they claimed to have cloned the first human being. There was a, a woman, you know, who was shown radiantly happy holding a child that was somehow a clone, mm. you know, and so that's other things that, that they're into, I don't know. I mean, there are people in the, U the UFO world more so in that world than I, they could tell you much about the Raelians. But this is the first time I've heard of them as sort of a Jewish sect. Mm. How long has that been true? Was that from the beginning? Or, or is, is, is this something that they, they've, uh, they've cooked up later? I don't know. Yeah, it's very interesting because I remember a group of Mormons once stopped by my house and they started reading from the beginning of Genesis. And you know how the we, the plural of we, is also in the beginning of yeah. Genesis. And, you know, they were saying, well, we, and because Mormons feel everyone can be potentially God. So they were taking the we from that perspective. And I was trying to explain to them, no, that's not what it means in its original language. Anyway, so the Mormons had this. And the other thing that I find very striking is they've done what Christianity does, which is mixed the idea of the Messiah with divinity. Meaning for us Muslims, Allah is Allah and the Messiah is the Messiah. They're, they're not... Yeah uh they're not one and so christians seem to have done that that the i because i've argued with christians and they'll say well he's the messiah and we're like yeah he is but what does that have to do with divinity right and um and so i think now the jewish people are kind of like falling into that same type of argument that i was talking about the mormons but they take it more from the ufo perspective yeah, and, and, and not, not from them, you know, because the, the Christians are still, you know, de de self-declared monotheists, even though they have a Trinitarian conception of monotheism, which is the way, and that this is a this is a difficult concept, and it's been difficult for Christians. There have been a lot of heresies and wrangles and church councils that that, that had had to be convened to make sense of that way of looking at things. But that, but in, anyway, uh, there have been no. There have been, been no official Christian polytheists uh, in mainstream Christianity until the present Pope, Francis, who made a statement uh, in an interview with Vatican Radio, which was on the Vatican website for a long time, in which he said, God does not exist. And mm. he said, oh, you're shocked that the Pope should say God does not exist? Why should you be shocked? You know, don't worry. So what? God does not exist. We have the three persons of the Trinity: Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Mm. 
and and uh, so so don't worry, God does not exist. We've got so in other words, this is the first quasi official declaration from mainstream Christianity that I've ever heard of that that talked about a polytheistic conception of divinity. You know, because all was before. You know, uh, the Nicene Creed says, uh, you know. I believe in, in, in one God, the creative uh, creator of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. Now, what son is, is a whole other question. Is the son divine? Yeah, in most cases, the, the Christians will say so. But anyway, it was always supposedly monotheistic. It, it was declared to be monotheistic. I believe, credo in unum deum, I believe in one God. And, then, and of course, it's the same thing that the, the truly Orthodox Jews say, Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. You know, hear Israel, the Lord, our God, the Lord is one. Mm. And it's the same as La ilaha, la ilaha illallah in Islam. There's no God but God. Uh, now we see in the Catholic world, suddenly this polytheism jumps up and it just jumps up for a second and then it disappears. That's the way Francis is. He just, you know, inserts this, this outrageous heresy, which a hundred years ago, there would have been people going with torches and pitchforks to burn the Vatican or to mm. get rid of this guy. You know, I mean, it would have shocked the whole Christian world. There is now no Christian world left to be shocked. So, you know, you know he can get away with it. And so that, that's where that polytheism comes in. Now we see somebody, you know, a, attempting to create a polytheistic Judaism. Yeah. That's right. Um, which that's which very is, interesting, actually. Uh -huh. And it goes, you know, with the verse of the Quran that sometimes puts Christianity and Judaism together, right? So mm -hmm. this kind of like similarity. Okay. Our organization is ready to begin construction. It remains only to find the host country to build it in. And the selection <laughs> process has already begun. How about Israel, as requested by the enemy? Selected country will so Israel is a special country of amongst them. A yeah. and scientific center of the whole planet for millennia to come. Since this is not Were you gonna say something? No, I'm just I'm I'm saying I was thinking that, that uh I don't think it just remains to dis to figure out which country. I, I think that that was the I has been the idea of what country for quite a while. Mm. Yeah, especially, I wonder if it somehow relates to the idea of the Abrahamic Accords and the three Abrahamic religions, you know, in, in this. Well, certainly it does. But what, what I'm seeing here is, you know, there's a big push for a long time uh, toward a one world religion or toward federating the world's religions under uh, a secular authority, you know, as, as, as if the world's religions could be, could, could, could create a confederacy on, under the umbrella of the UN or something like that. That's what the United Religions Initiative, which came out of the extreme liberal wing of the Episcopal Church in this country, was you know, attempted to do. And that, that's still around. There have been many attempts like that, you know, the Temple of Understanding and World Citizen Movement and all these things to try to create uh, a one world religion. But there was always the problem that, well, you can almost do it, but then the different religions will assert their the differences and you can't quite really do that you know you can weaken the religions by bringing them together in an attempt to create a one world religion saying that 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 the purpose of this is to create peace and, and amity and friendship between the religions you know but you can't quite get there now i'm seeing that the idea of a ufo religion of an alien religion you know uh uh is, pro is the closest thing we've got to a true one world religion that all of the powers that be you know, in, in the globalist world uh, are getting behind. And this is what the one, the one that might actually take place. Yeah, you know? and because it, it also fulfills the Bible prophecy of Daniel, you know, the Messiah coming from the sky, and also our prophecies of Jesus coming from the sky. Yeah, and, and, and yeah, the, the, all yeah, of this can be the same from. You know, it's it's the descent of the heavenly Jerusalem in, in uh, the book of Revelations, which uh, I think one of the earlier uh, suggestions that, that this was, was really a UFO was uh, Close Encounters of the Third Kind by Steven Spielberg, 
uh, because uh, and, and at least that's that's the way it, it affected me. Because back in my late hippie days, uh, I, I did a painting of a UFO. I did I, this is confess, you know, yeah. <laughs> you know, confess, <laughs> you know, astafarallah, astafarallah, astafarallah. I did it, and you know, I I, I asked for forgiveness. I, I did a painting of a UFO with with a city on top of it. And mm -hmm. you see that there are images like that. You'll see, you know, a flying saucer like thing with towers. And this. And, and, and that was my conception of the UFO incarnation of the heavenly Jerusalem. And, you know, here we have Jerusalem again, which, right, which they're the going to talk about shortly. And what we're about to look at. And, um, of course, Steven Spielberg is Jewish. And whether he was, you know, he's involved in this larger uh, Zionist UFO thing, I don't know. But, you know, he, 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 his movies were very definitely uh, they had a propagandistic twist uh one of the mad scientists i'm now in touch with is named jack sarfati who is um apparently a very interesting cutting edge astrophysicist hmm. and and uh the story of him and his his friends is told in a book called how the hippies saved physics so he's mm. coming sort of out of an LSD hippie direction, but um, and you know he, he is his UFO circle has the main the main UFO uh, uh, spokespeople uh, uh, in the world. You know it has Nick Pope from uh, from Britain, and it has Christopher Mellon is very big into UFOs. The Mellon family in the '60s was involved in uh disseminating lsd mm. uh one of the one of the the branches of the mellon family owned millbrook which was timothy leary's psychedelic manor house in upstate new york where you know which was his big scene and um you you you, you know the mellons and were apparently involved you know with the cia in creating massive uh, numbers of doses of LSD, which they just spread throughout society. And now uh, Christopher Mellon, who is past assistant, I think I'm getting this right, assistant secretary of defense for intelligence under Bill Clinton. Mm. And, you know, and he's, he's you know, I, I can send him an email anytime if I can, can, you know, write back to something crazy Jack Sarfati says, he will hear it. He's in that circle. And a lot of the people who are talking about UFOs at this point. And, um, you know, what I, I find from Peter Lavenda, who wrote a very interesting trilogy called Sinister Forces, a Grimoire of American Political Witchcraft, mm. you know, which is very well written. You know, it, it, it may, you have to take it partly with a grain of salt because Lavenda is a magician. Like, you know, in every sense of the word. And, but he's also very literate and, and very knowledgeable. And, you, you, you know, he'll show you something in that world. And he uh, makes the uh, statement that uh, Jack Sarfati was the one who in introduced Yuri Geller, an Israeli, you know, and, and, and uh, you know, a, a famous psychic, you know, who, who could apparently bend spoons by psychic power and who was... Um, studied by the Stanford Research Institute and I think Lawrence Livermore Laboratory. And when, when all of the, the, the intelligence agencies, the CIA, the FBI, the DIA, everybody else, naval intelligence, were coming together to study psychic powers for the purposes of defense and purposes of espionage. When they were doing the whole remote viewing project. The remote viewing came out of that, yeah. And uh, um, which apparently, one of the stories I hear is, is this was stimulated by a book that, that the hippies were reading years ago called Psychic Discoveries Behind the Iron Curtain, mm -hmm. which, uh, if this story is correct, clued uh, the CIA and other people like that into the fact that we were losing the psychic arms race. And so we had to do something. So anyway, but um, Yuri Geller is, is, is still involved in, in the UFO world, you know, and uh, you know, in, in the, the world of, of, of studying psychic powers. Well, anyway, 
Lavenda claims that it was Jack Sarfati who introduced Yuri Geller to Steven Spielberg. Oh. So, you know, and, and before I read that, I, I looked at Spielberg's movies and said, these are, this is pure propaganda for some, some big development. This is mm. social engineering. Mm. And then yeah. you see that, 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 that uh, Sarfati introduced Geller, you know, an Israeli to um, Steven Spielberg, a Jew, and um, you know th th this, in in a larger sense, is probably part of the framework, part of the context uh, that, that that is coming out in in this video. That, that so that's uh, very interesting. So they, I mean, that means that they're well connected, and oh, yeah. they have an influence through Hollywood and so on and so forth. Oh yeah, definitely, and and and, and through the intelligence agencies, you mm -hmm. know. I mean, CIA, Hollywood, I mean, it's all, <laughs> it's, um, if, if you're going to change the, the basic paradigm of the United States and the Western world away from Christianity and democracy and liberal humanism toward uh, Luciferian um, technocracy. Uh, wow, that of, is of such which, an... Which the, 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 is, the UFO religion is... is would be the religion of Luciferian technocracy. Wow. If you're going to do that, you, ha you have to hit at all points at once. You can't just, you know, you, 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 have, you have to do a total takeover of society and, and the collect collective consciousness. Luciferian, what was this? Uh, techno uh, technocracy, which, you know, which was the rule okay. of technology. You know? Luciferian technocracy. Everybody remember that word. That is an awesome word. Okay. Non-profit project. The host country will reap most of its financial, scientific, and economic benefits. We are looking for a fully independent country that will grant visiting extraterrestrials full diplomatic immunity. The host country must therefore provide the necessary authorizations to build a third temple on sovereign land. The project will be conducted in five stages. Stage one: selection of the host country. Stage two: construction of a half-scale embassy model to attract tourism. Stage three: construction of the embassy itself. Stage four, creation of a Scientopolis, a research and education center where the world's top scientists will work to free and serve humanity. Stage oh, yeah. one, official contact with Yelling. That's actually very well thought out to create tourism around this and mix it with religion. Sure. And then bring the top scientists and thinkers of the world. Wow, that's going to have an <laughs> impact. Yeah, and, you know, uh, t t uh, another... Uh, Another branch of this effort is represented by Avi Lub. You know that name, Avi Lub, who's, no. uh, I believe he's an Israeli. Some people have said he's connected with Mossad or other. Well, Avi is definitely a Jewish name. Yeah, and, and yeah, right. And, and so he's, he's an astronomer uh, at Harvard University mm. who is issuing the craziest statements about extraterrestrials that I've ever seen. So you see, well, Harvard, you know, wh where where are, are, the, are the sober established straight scientists? Maybe there aren't any anymore, or they're, or they're seriously marginalized. Mm. Because what you see in the universities is first, ideological craziness takes over. But at first, it takes over in the social sciences, in the liberal arts. You know, you, 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 have, you have crazy views of history. You have crazy views of gender. You have crazy views of, uh, you know, social forces, which, which you look at, this is not, this is not an academic, serious academic study of, of a society. This is a series of truly crazy um, ideologies coming largely from the direction of cultural Marxism and uh, the Frankfurt School and people like that. Uh, but cr a lot crazier than the Frankfurt School, even uh, th th that is being projected on the uh, you know those who can afford to go to college, you know, who, who will become the intelligentsia of this coming world. So, so that's. But you'd say, well, of course, the physical sciences are are, are still going to be based upon the scientific method and, and 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 serious research and this and this. Maybe not. Maybe. Avi Lub is, is, is what you get when uh, ideological craziness and propaganda, and which essentially are a way of, of creating a mass mental illness, of, of separating 
people from any sense of reality. So they will believe crazy things. Um, th that's what happens when that ideological thing uh, invades the hard sciences, the physical sciences. And, you know, Avi Loeb is the, is the best example. Yeah, I mean, you introduced me to uh, um, Wolfgang Smith, and I started wow. looking into that. And then I mean, we're definitely going to have a whole program on that. And and I, sure, I understood. Mean, maybe you could interview Wolfgang himself. He's getting pretty old, but he might be interested in being interviewed by a Muslim, you know, and we'll, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Maybe we could do a program <laughs> with both of you. That'd be interesting. But, okay, let's do this. But This third temple, located with a futuristic, scientific, and tourism-oriented complex, will be a testament to the evolution of our civilization as it reaches for the stars. Israel would become the most important destination of all time. It would attract world leaders, entertainment celebrities, scientists, researchers, visionary entrepreneurs. Remember the statement of the Prophet, uh, Imran al-Bayt al-Maqdas, Kharab al-Yathrib, the flourishing of Jerusalem and the building. Imran means literally building of Jerusalem will be the downfall of Medina. So I guess these kind of like the, the new, like, you know, it's happened, state of Israel, then Jerusalem's the capital. Now there will be the flourishing of Jerusalem, but the Muslim world will be falling apart while all this is happening. Yeah. And then Muslims will grow up not knowing what is plural of respect. You know, that we, indeed, we sent down the Quran. And if you teach, how are you going to teach a computer plural of respect? Like, you know, the computational thinking. I'm not sure if the idea of other will be, something that they can understand i mean we already don't understand the the new generation and then i don't know how computers are going to like process that yeah. and uh and then they're going to say see look at your quran it says we sent that's us the aliens doing this you know we said know. That. yeah exactly yeah and and of course you know, the, the aliens... so go ahead no 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 Bismillah. well i mean the, the the aliens as i've said before are pretty much to be identified with the jinn so what the, the, this is replacing um, worship of Allah with worship of the jinn directly, you know, and, and, and it's, it's, it's directly attacking the unity of Allah, the unity of God, which, which is the central principle, one of the central principles of Islam is the unity of God. Mm. And, you know, because if, if, if you cannot see the unity of, of God, you have no sense of the absolute. If you have no sense of the absolute, you're consciousness is fragmented on the highest possible level which leads to fragmentation on every other level so okay of retailers hoping to profit from the surging economy of the embassy area jerusalem the new capital of earth will be a destination for visitors of all ages <laughs> seeing the heal. so jerusalem will become the new new york you know in a sense yeah there still may be more Jews in New York than there, there are in, in uh, Jerusalem and Tel Aviv put together, but New York will, will be a colony of, of, uh, of uh, Israel and of uh, Jerusalem. So. Okay, yeah. Uh, just on that point, there's a verse of Quran that talks about mass migration of Jews back to Israel. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if the American economic situation or anti-Semitism will rise and then that will give them a reason to come back to Israel. So anyway. well, and, and, you know, a lot of that has already happened, you know, yeah. based upon, you know, the Holocaust and, you know, and, you know, um, you know, the, 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 the Zionists were um, negotiating with the Nazis because, you know, they didn't want to be Holocausted. So, so they said, well, you want to get rid of us, give us Israel, you know, and, and finally it, it ended up to be Britain that gave them Israel, but they were making the similar negotiations with the Nazis as well. So. Yeah. It will be an incredible drawing card with the potential to attract millions of visitors per year and billions of dollars in income. After a first contact with Yelim, the tourism value would be incalculable. Here are some of the basic requirements for the construction of the third temple. The site will be large enough for the temple to be built in the middle of a park. The third temple must be at least a thousand meters from all surrounding walls. The third temple must be in a neutral territory that is designated by the host country and recognized by all other nations. 
The approximate time frame will be 2019 to 2022 diplomatic initiative, achieve adoption of the protocol on diplomatic relations with an extraterrestrial civilization, the Elohim, organize an international conference for the purpose of discussing the optional protocol concerning embassies for extraterrestrials. 2022 to 2025, site location analysis, identify suitable sites for the third temple project. 2025 to 2027, site acquisition. The preferred site will be identified, acquired, and transferred to the international rider movement. An agreement will be reached about major off-site infrastructure. 2027 to 2030, planning and implementation. Master planning, architectural and engineering design, approvals, contracts, and commissioning will be completed. The third temple complex will be constructed, including a model of it that will be open to the public. After 2030, the third temple will operate in caretaker mode, awaiting the arrival of the Elohim delegation. Do you want Israel to host the most important event in human history? Be part of it. Please contact us. So th this... Hello, I don't welcome, welcome everyone to this very, very important... Yes? Yeah, I don't think this scenario is going to be the one that will happen. But, but this will contribute to the one that's going to happen. Because after all, the third temple has got to be built on the Temple Mount. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and they've already got the red heifers and you know, the whole the idea of building the temple on the Temple Mount, whether or not that uh, entails the destruction of the Dome of the Rock. That's, that's the main line of all this. Mm -hmm. the, the, this is, is, is something that, that is you know, a, a projection by, by a well-funded cult but but it's eccentric to, to to the main line it will contribute to the main line because these crazy ideas will get out there and then later people say well we can't really do that but we could do this we could do we could do a third temple on the temple mount and the Raelians will have helped that along and you know, that's what i think right right it's it's kind of like the way polarization happened in america right the more like extreme you get you move away from the center to the extremes yeah, and, and 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 elements of the extremes be, become normalized, right? And 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 so this, you know, there's less of a center than there used to be, even if if the absolute extreme is not what is uh, what finally prevails. You know, it still had its effect. So. Important conference, important for the whole of humanity, but especially for the Jewish people. Uh, the title of today's conference is The Plan of the Third Temple Finally Revealed by the Real Jews. My name is Sharon Shanti. I'm originally from Israel, and it's a great, great honor for me to be your host and moderator for today's event. So we have a few very, very special guests today. Our first guest is Leon Ariel Malou, a Raelian chief rabbi and spokesperson for the Mashiach Rael, who will present to us the Third Temple Project more from a philosophical aspect. I will do a short introduction in Hebrew as well. Uh, so welcome again i'm very very happy to be with you today please enjoy the conference leon please go ahead shalom after giving lectures for over 35 years in different oh. countries and living 18 years in israel to bring the message from the mashiach rael given by the elohim on december 13 1973 i'm addressing to you today because time is running short for the survival of the state of israel as it was mentioned recently by the ex-prime minister Ehud barak in May 2022. The survival of the state of Israel will not last over eight years. The Israel is now on its 74 year of existence. So the people of Israel, the state of Israel, have only six years to accept or to refuse the building of the third temple. Otherwise, Israel will cease to exist. I will repeat again, Israel will cease to exist as its survival only is based on the accepting the Mashiach and helping build the third temple to welcome our creators from space, the Elohim. I have given lectures, as I mentioned, and bringing many citations from the Tanakh and other Hebrew scripts, where it's proven clearly the Elohim are not a single God, but an extraterrestrial civilization, 
who have created us over 25,000 years ago with mastering of genetic manipulations of DNA. Yeah. I will give only four citations because now, if you understand Hebrew, yeah, now, so, so, so th this is the, the essential myth or, or, or the major dogma of the UFO religion, which is certainly not just Jewish or Raelian. It's a much wider angle than that, is that we were created not by God, not by Allah, but by the uh, UFO aliens through genetic engineering. That is the story. That's and the story. If, if you will look at the... Um, Netflix original series called uh, Top Secret UFO Projects Declassified, you will see that myth is being, is being spread. And uh, whoever is doing this is going out to the American Indian, Native American tribes in North America and saying, you know, hey, we, we believe in you, 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 you guys' mythology, man, because we, we, we're realizing, you know, that these Kachinas that were the star people that came down to, to the pueblos of the Southwest or, or, or the star people that the Lakota, the, the Sioux Indians believed in and all these people, you know, we, we, we know what these are, that these were the aliens. So, so you, you, you guys were in touch with these people a long time ago and we really appreciate that and we can learn from you. And, you know, and, and so uh, th this is something that's appealing to some of the Native Americans because first it seems to validate, you know, the white people are now coming in validating their mythology, their, their religions, like the hippies. When the hippies did that, you know, a lot of the Native Americans were very touched, you know. It, it probably didn't last that long because an awful lot of charlatans and people who, who just wanted to do cultural appropriation and stuff and make money off the Native Americans turned up. And so this probably soured uh, to a degree pretty quickly, but originally, you know, the hip, you know, there are these young white kids coming and, 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 you know, they believe in us, you know, they want to look like us, they grow long hair, they have headbands, you know, right, and so, uh, so this is a successor to that, I'm talking about in North America, just, you know, just that wing of it, because what happened, I was just writing something like this, um, LSD was disseminated throughout U.S. society by the CIA, partly through its MK Ultra mind control program. Uh, they wanted to, to produce not just mind controlled individuals uh, as, as uh, like, like, like in the movie, the Manchurian candidate, you know, who, a mind controlled assassin who doesn't know what he's doing. Uh, if there's an act, a real life example of that, it could well have been Sirhan Sirhan who assassinated Robert Kennedy. But that isn't just what the only thing they were up to. They wanted to transform society completely. Mm -hmm. So as I say, they spread LSD throughout the society, society, and then they watched as society went through a kind of death process. It, it, I use the word bardo, which is a Tibetan, from the Tibetan Book of the Dead, meaning once you die, they say everything that's in your psyche, you know, starts to come loose. You know, it's like, not, not just your whole life flashes before your eyes, but all the, the deeper archetypes, everything that your that your psyche is composed of starts to, to appear as visions and visions. So something like that is what happened when LSD was spread throughout society. The people, the, the, the main, the big social engineers could sit back and say, now we will see the main archetypes of the society. We'll see the main dominant beliefs and, and assumptions the society is composed of. And they just watched because it all got dramatized in a very short time under the influence of LSD and other psychedelics. And so they just took notes and they said, well, that's interesting. That's what the people are doing. Leftist politics, they're doing art, they're doing sexual liberation, they're doing this, they're doing, you know. And, and they said, now what we're going to do is develop our own counterfeit version of every one of these major social assumptions, beliefs, or dominant ideas. Mm -hmm. And once we do that, we will have total control over society. That's mm -hmm. what I think they did. And, and you know, it, it had to do with, with uh, creating different religions. Like the UFO religion was, you know, is, was ideal for this. So, so yeah, uh, Scientology will probably fall into that, right? Well, I mean, yeah, so Scientology is a pretty good example of, uh, of, of their method. Scientology itself is not going to be dominant as such, because it's a very unpopular cult, and a lot of people realize it's bad news. 
But yeah, you learn, and, and Scientology is a, a UFO religion, essentially. That's what it is. So, so anyway, what happened is with the, um, uh, the, the, the idea that the, uh, that the hippies you know, were into the Native Americans and appreciated American, Native American spirituality was taken by the powers that be and turned into what's happening now, people going out to, to, to the different Native American tribes and saying, well, you know, your gods are real. We believe in you. We appreciate you because our, your, your gods were the aliens. And so this validates uh, the Native American, American beliefs because the Native Americans are, are in a very oppressed uh, situation in North America, but now they're getting some validation. And secondly, it brings in tourist dollars because if you can talk, you know, uh, UFO tourism is going to get bigger and bigger, and some of the Native American tribes want to be on the UFO tourist circuit. You know, so that's so. What I'm saying is, you see this from the standpoint of the Raelians and in terms of the state of Israel, but there are other branches of the same religion that, that are trying to. Uh, uh, gain cultural dominance in different parts of the world, not necessarily under the framework of Judaism. Mm. Although Judaism may really be the major framework, you know, in the last analysis. In the we last, yeah, yeah. But, you know, maybe, maybe not. It's going to be your responsibility. Your responsibility will be to help the state of Israel, his survival or his end. And allow me to say that the rabbis that will listen to this have the full responsibility of the survival of the state of Israel or the end of the state of Israel. I'm going to mention a couple of citations. First of all, the one with Zechariah, Zechariah 5, 1, 2, and 3. The Arba Eser Ba'ama. Translating it in English is I lift up my eyes and looked. It was a flying scroll. It says to me, What do you see? I say, I see a scroll flying. His length is 20 cubits and his weight is 10 cubits. The cubits was an Hebrew measurement using ancient times and corresponding to 63.56 centimeters. So the scroll that Zechariah was looking at, and in Hebrew is calling Megillah. Megillah means Galil, it means a cylinder, was 12 meters 71 long and 6 meters 36 wide. According to you, in our recent, recent times, what is a flying scroll, uh, scroll or a cylinder? 12 meters 71 long by 6 meters 36 wide. Unfortunately, our ancestors were primitive and could not understand that everything that was coming from the skies was from an extraterrestrial civilization and everything was divine for them. Another important citation from Shemuel 4, 8. If we did that with Quran, it would be considered very bad hermeneutics. Uh, to say the least. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's a big jump, but that's what they're but trying I, to promote. You know, I mean, I, I, I'd like to send this link to this video to the Chabad group here in Lexington, Kentucky, and see what they think about it. Mm, that would be interesting. That would be very interesting. Because you know, I mean, th this is this is not Judaism. Th 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 this is not Orthodox, Reformed, or Conservative Judaism. This is wacko. But but how how far have crazy ideas like this advanced in in terms of Judaism and in terms of the state of Israel? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, that's a very good point, right? So at at one on, at first glance, you you. If this was like 20 years ago and you looked at this, you'd be like, ah, oh, whatever, right? It's like, who wants to do, who wants to deal with such friends, fringe ideas? Yeah. But then when you're looking at what is being said at Harvard, like you mentioned, yeah. United Nations, Trump, then you're like, okay, there's something going on here. You know, that fringe organization is at least creating noise at the very least. Well, it's it's becoming a. Uh, I mean, you, you just hear, listen to what the Wolfgang Smith says says about physics. Physics has lost its mind. Yeah, you know the fringe, and this has been happening ever since. You know, I mean, I mean, 
what hap what happened with the with the sixties counterculture is the fringe, you know, suddenly became the center to some degree. There were certain bohemian attitudes and occult beliefs that suddenly became mainstream or gradually became mainstream, but they're definitely mainstream now. And this is something, you know, uh, Rene Guénon talked about the counter initiation, which is what we're exactly what we're talking about here, which was crazy fringe ideas like this, which he saw as very subversive, very dangerous to society. But at the time he was writing about them in like the reign of quantity and the signs of the times, mm -hmm. they did remain in a fringe world. I mean, you know, the, the Theosophical Society had influence, but it was fringe. The spiritualist had a lot of influence, but they're fringe. Uh, you, you, you wouldn't have a, a king or a prime minister, you know, come forward and express theosophical or spiritualist ideas. Nowadays, you might, you know, mm. and so. Oy lanu, mi yatsilenu mi yad Elohim hadirim. Ha'elu elahem, ha'elohim ha'makim. Every time it's mentioned Elohim, which is a plural, it's another plural after that. Elohim Hadirim, the powerful Elohim, in plural, both of them. And Elohim Hadirim, Elu Elahem. Here they are. It's a plural again, mentioning the ones who brought all the makot to the Egyptian, all the plagues to the Egyptian, Egyptian people, which is, they were the ones that lead us out of Egypt. The Elohim have been helping their children of Israel as their direct descendants, because we are the direct descendants from the children of Elohim and women of the earth. And this is important to understand. This is just like the verse of the Quran. Nahnu abna'ullahi. We are the children of Allah. Uh, yeah, exactly. Quran and, mentions... and that's what, what um, I'm, I'm trying to remember which Pueblo it was. I think it was the Zuni Pueblo in, uh, in the American Southwest. Um, uh, on that UFO um, series I mentioned uh, from Netflix, uh, a Zuni medicine man came forward and said, yeah, we're descended from the aliens. You know, uh, you know apparently I uh, said that they, they did a, a long time ago, they did like an upgrade on our DNA, you know, and so like we're, we're, we're half alien. Now. So this medicine man from the Zuni Pueblo was saying exactly the same thing. We're the special people because we got alien DNA. Now, where's that coming from? So this word Elohim you mentioned to me one of the meanings could be like being the children of God right or the, or it's it, the sons of God is, is sons of God so yeah. this verse of the Quran yeah. and the Jews and the Christians they say we are the children of God and he loves us so then Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is told to say oh, oh Prophet وسلم, قل, then why is Allah punishing you for your sins? You're just a creation, a man, a human we've created. And the ayah continues, Allah forgives whoever he wants. And he punishes whoever he wants. And for indeed Allah alone is the sovereignty of the heavens and the earth. And whatever is between them. But I just thought this word Elohim, as you translated it as son of God, I thought that was sons, very... Sons of God. Sons okay. of God, yes, in plural, yes. Uh, okay, let's go back. Yeah, and, and um, I would like to know if that's the word used in, in the Hebrew uh, book of Enoch, where it talked about the sons of God mm. looked upon the, uh, uh, the, the daughters of men and found them fair. And interbred with them and, and creates created a race of giants, the Nephilim. Mm. This, this is a myth that uh, is found in the UFO world, and, and it's it's found among those people who, who believe in a higher genetic cast of humanity. Right. Because in the book of Enoch, that was looked at as a very uh, negative development. You know, there's mm. this hybrid race of giants that 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 you know <laughs> wreaked havoc on Earth. But, but there are people who say, well, yes, but but the, the, those the Nephilim were really the ancestors of all the uh, all the um, the royal families uh, of the earth, you know. So because because they are a higher genetic caste, mm. and you you will you'll find that myth a lot of places, and, and also in the UFO world. That for the Jewish people who have the book, who have the power to read and understanding, 
it's very powerful to understand that the Elohim you are praying every day without knowing who they are. Now it's time to stop believing and try to understand. I will translate it in English in Shemuel 4 8. Oh, Ilanu, it's hard to us, say the Finnish team. Who will save us out of the hands of this mighty Elohim? Mighty Elohim, plural again, Elohim Adirim, which is a powerful Elohim on the right translation. They are the same Elohim who struck the Egyptian with every place in the desert, in the Yom Kippur, which is one of the most important days for all Jewish worldwide. During the prayers, we mention Elohim Chayim. What that means? Write us in the book of life above, in the skies, Elohim Chayim, another two plurals, meaning Elohim and Chayim are two plurals. The Elohim alive, because they are alive. There are many Elohim who are alive. They created us to their image and likeness. And they have been taken by gods, by our ancestors. In Tehillim 395, He is the great, is Yahweh, the great king of all the Elohim. So I will ask you a question now. How many Elohim are there? If he's the king of all the Elohim, it means there are many Elohim. Yes, Yahweh is the most important of all the Elohim. And he's the one that have sent his last messenger rail, the Mashiach, to welcome them after building the third temple. And the existence of the state of Israel is based on that purpose. Because so Ra is supposed to be the Messiah. By his land. There was, there, there, Ra El was, was a leader of a UFO cult back in the 70s. You know, and, and uh, if he's the Messiah, you know, he's been a little slow in establishing his kingdom. You know? But now they're talking about Rael as, as a coming figure. So that's a change. So. Mm. Yeah, and it, this thing that he's wearing is interesting. It has a swastika in it. Yeah, a swastika inside a star of David. Yeah. And, you know, th th they're not going to point that out. That's supposed to get to you subliminal, right? Oh, okay. You know, and, and what I said in, in, in my book on um, UFOs, which you said I should mention, so it's... Yes called the alien disclosure deception, the um, metaphysics of social engineering, right there. Yeah, um, what I said in that book is, is that things like, oh, here, here, here's a medallion with a, with a um, swastika, in, inside, swastika inside a Star of David. Well, if people were conscious of that, they'd say, that's rather a contradiction, isn't it? It is, yes. But, but you know, but unconscious contradiction is uh, a mind control technique. You, 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 you throw <clears throat> a contradiction at people, however it's done, verbally, or a contradiction between speech and body language, or a con there's so many different ways to do it. It's, it's sort of a stage magic technique. And if you, if you throw a contradiction at people, uh, they, they, they sort of lose consciousness, you know, they're, they, uh, um, they lose their critical abilities. They don't ask any questions. They're just saying, mm -hmm. well, if something that contradictory is possible, then I guess anything is possible. Yeah. And once they're in that state, the, the magician comes along and says, okay, and now I, I will tell you exactly what is possible. And this is the story. And, and, and they have no way of saying, wait a minute, that I, I don't, I don't, I don't believe that because they've already believed something unconsciously that could not be. So they're wide open to suggestion and control. That's it's a technique given to our ancestors, given to Abraham. It's for one only reason: to build the third temple and welcome the Elohim. And as mentioned in the messages given to Rael on December 13, 1973, by Yahweh Elohim Himself. The survival of the Israel and the reason why Israel took back his land is to welcome the Elohim back among their children, the people of Israel, as we are their direct descendants. It's up to you to accept or to refuse. But if, you, if Israel refuses for the eighth time already, Israel will lose its country and it will be a new diaspora. Another citation, which is a cherry on the Sunday, Ishayahu 13.5. They come from a far land, very far from the skies. Now, if I ask you a question, if nowadays, how do we call the people that come from a far land, very far from the skies? 
Aliens. And the extraterrestrials? So the Elohim, our creators, are an extraterrestrial civilization. And they want to come back now. You have many other citations in my lectures, and you can have them on request. But I'm mentioning once again, it's your sole responsibility now. Every Jew, every children of Israel is responsible for the survival of the state of Israel. And you, especially the rabbis, will be accused of crimes if Israel will lose his country. Because for the Elohim, that we all pray without knowing who they are. We have been taught that the Elohim were a God, and we have been praying them for centuries and for generations. Today, it's time to understand and stop to believe. The Mashiach Rael is already among us. He brings a message from the Elohim, and it's up to you now to read in the land where to build the third temple and recognize him as the last Elohim messenger. The Mashiach, long wait, long time that we are waiting for him, is already among us. So it's up to you now, it's up to every Jew, and mostly to the responsibility of every rabbi to recognize Rael as the Mashiach and to help him build the third temple. Otherwise, Israel has no reason to exist. Now, I have seen so far about two rabbis other than this group saying something very similar, meaning talking about UFOs and aliens. Mm -hmm. And I have seen many rabbis talking about the coming of the Mashiach is soon, well, meaning the theme yes, that it's soon. Coming of the Mashiach is, is within the tradition. Saying that the Mashiach is is multiple and, and that we were not created by God, but by, you know, UFO aliens, that's a total attack upon and deconstruction of Judaism. Yeah. You might as well, you might as well kiss on the Torah as to say that, you know? So I think uh, one of the sheikhs uh, said it very well that the Antichrist will not just, I mean, he's going to be primarily also deceiving the Jews, right? Yeah, yeah. So, anyway. Yeah, and, and it, it, this is, you know, you, you have, in this context, you have to remember that the present Pope, you know, said, well, if the UFO aliens come, you know, somebody said, what would you do? He said, I'd baptize them. Well, that's nice. He didn't say <laughs> I'd worship them, you know, so that's a little better. But um, I, I forget, who is the guy's name? He was the... Um, the, one of the Vatican astronomers was was uh, talking about. I used to remember his name. Uh, <clears throat> the Vatican astronomer was saying the, the UFO aliens will, will definitely they're not demons, or he, as he said, definitely they're not a case of spirit attachment, which is not a Catholic term at all. That's from spiritualism. Mm -hmm. That means you know a spirit gets attached to your aura. Mm -hmm. That's the way the spiritualists talk about something we would call demonic possession or jinn possession. But you know, well, they're not that. They're not bad, you know. And actually, they might be might have things to teach us. So this is what the Vatican astronomer says. So this is part of the same effort. And it it's it straight strains credulity for me to believe that these people who are getting the Zunis to say one thing and 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 it's coming the same thing is coming out of the mouth of the Pope and, and his, and his uh, Vatican astronomer, and the same thing is coming out of the mouth of the Raelians and mm. certain other rabbis. Do you think these people are not in contact with each other on some level? Or do you think they're not groups who are essentially feeding the same story to all of them or however that works? That there, there is, you, you've got to see this, you know, call it a conspiracy if you will, but, you know, it, it, it is, it is, it, it, illogical to think that these people aren't in contact with each other on some level the, the, yeah, this is i mean a massive this is a great point. story for i mean and especially in a crisis moment in a sense the crisis is great for this yeah <laughs> if everybody's afraid no reason to exist everybody is they will they will believe anything that is supposed to save them like this guy says well of course if you want to save the state of Israel, you have to believe in the aliens. Yeah. That goes without saying, right? Obviously. Really? Where did that come from? You know, yeah. but if people are afraid enough, they'll they'll swallow it. Yeah. And if you don't wake up now, as the Prime Minister of Israel mentioned, you only have six years left. So you better move. Even if the state of Israel have to give a land to build a third temple upon the Mashiach request, 
we have given the mandate to a couple of real estate agencies in Israel to find a piece of land that we will buy to build this third temple close to Jerusalem. But it will be on two conditions. First of all, that the city of Jerusalem will authorize the building of the third temple, of the construction. And the second one, that they will help us to obtain by the Israeli government the status of extraterritoriality, which is mandatory to build a third temple, as the Elohim don't want anyone to put their nose inside the third temple before their arrival. Today, for the first time, the plans of the third temple will be finally revealed by the real Jews. Wow, thank you so much, Leon. Um, so now we're going to move forward with our next guest, Daniel Turkut, who for the past 12 years has been the Director General of the Third Temple Project. Thank you, Leon. Our next guest is Daniel Turkut, who is the Director of the Project of the Third Temple Project for the past 12 years. Daniel, please go ahead. Welcome, everybody, to this very important conference for the whole humanity, but especially for the Jewish people. Leon said something very important in his speech a few minutes ago. He talked about Israel who refused seven times uh, to uh, give a land and the extraterritoriality to build the third temple. So seeing that uh, the Mashaya Rael decided to uh, open uh, the embassy project for all the countries all around the world, not only Israel, but all the countries. Uh, and this happened in 2000, the year 2000. And from that moment, we started to uh, solicit uh, all the countries in the world uh, to explain the uh, embassy, the extraterrestrial uh, embassy project. And um, there, there were some many key uh, moments on that process. And I would say that it's, it's like a curve. At the beginning, it was kind of a flat curve uh, 50 years ago. And as time pass, passes and uh, as uh, the, the proofs of the existence of extraterrestrials, uh, more and more sightings, uh, people are more and more interested in the ancient astronaut theory, uh, the crop circles that, more, that are more and more explicit and are giving us a message about the existence of extraterrestrials. The curve uh, now tends to go up. It's going to be exponential. Uh, so um, by soliciting uh, the countries, of course, we had some, uh, some answers from them. Uh, we uh, talked to about 1,000 diplomats in the last years, especially since 2018. Um, and uh, I would say that one of the key points is when the United Nations replied to our letter that we sent in 2019. On May 19, 2019, we received a letter from the United Nations uh, in which they were telling us that we have to pers pursue our diplomatic uh, actions by soliciting the uh, UN ambassadors of all the countries in the world. What Leon just said is even more important is that it's going to put a lot of pressure on Israel from now on, because they are not the only one in the race anymore to, to receive and to host the third temple. And uh, my hope is that one country will accept to host the uh, embassy project, the ET embassy project, and that all the spotlights will be put on Israel because once again, something beautiful is happening. There's a momentum right now because of all the work that the team did, that Leon did, that many people supporting me did. And with all the team, we are very optimistic that very soon we, have, we will have the reply and the answers that we need to go ahead with the construction of the third temple. All right, wow, thank you so much for that, Daniel. Okay, so uh, moving forward with our next speaker, Claude Chevet, who is the chief architect and visual artist for the third temple project, who will reveal the actual blueprints of the project. Um, okay, thank you, Daniel. Uh, Hi everybody, my name is Claude Chauvet. Uh, I'm privileged to be an architect of the embassy. I'm originally from Switzerland. I've been working on this project since day one, 1990, when it first started. I'm talking about this project of the embassy. It will be explained later on. Uh, I hope you're going to enjoy what uh, I'm presenting you here. And, uh, not much to say more about me than for you to enjoy the work that we've done. Thank you so much for watching. Here we can see how the building of an embassy will impact a site. In our particular case, it will generate a city around it. It's not every day that we're building an embassy to welcome an ET simulation to Earth. Can you imagine the financial impact having a city all around this embassy? It's going to be phenomenal. Wow, the society will completely switch and change our relationship with the universe. Blueprint, chapter two. Here, actually, you can see a real blueprint. They are not blue, but black and white. 1,870 square meters going to be built on the slab foundation. With a south entrance, a welcoming room, an aesthetic chamber, a conference room, an access, a residential area of 1,226 square meters, an access, a dining room of 146 square meters, on the north entrance that we are able to find out thanks to the blueprint. Here, zooming in, we are in the reception area, the welcoming room, 
with all its dimension, its material descriptive, the stair level, the level, the size, and the volume of the space. Here, zooming on the court area, the living space, Beautiful. you can That's see uh, the size, the dimension, and the design of. Well, what you could have, you know, surrounding this as part of the city, which will grow up around the embassy, is, is a series of amusement parks, you know, theme parks, each one dedicated to a different world religion, which are all, of course, came originally from the, the UFO, you know, the ancient aliens who gave us all our religion, our, all, all our culture. So you would have, you know, we, we have one, uh, a Christian uh, town, which is like a theme park in Branson, Missouri, <laughs> you know, and that, that, that could be the Christian one. And you could have a, you know, um, what's uh, Abiquiu. Abiquiu in, in, in the Southwest is, is that, that, you know, uh, reconstitution of a, a of a traditional Muslim town or whatever it is, you know, there's different ones, and you could do that all around. So, I mean, what you have here is you you, you want to see how religion re, 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 relates to globalism and how globalism and religion together relate to the direct building of the regime of Al Dajjal or Antichrist. Here we mm -hmm. have it. That's what this is. This and anyone who wants wants to know something about Antichrist as a false messiah from a very powerful perspective should read <coughs> the reign of quantity and the signs of the times by Rene Genon, G U E N O M. Um, you know, it's 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 that's a hard book to understand. That's his hardest book, I think. No, it, no, it's not. There's worse. Because oh, there's. Yeah. There was one book he wrote, I forget which it was, it was very easy read. And then that book was like, okay, this, you need explanations for that one. Yeah, well, it's, you know, you have, if you get, once you get into Genon, you know, you, 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 you get him into your ear and you, you may suddenly magically get the ability to read that book. But, uh, but, you know, he, he, one of the things he talks about is how the symbols of the Messiah and the symbols of Dajjal or the false Messiah or of Satan become, you know, are different, you know, the same symbols used for both, like in, in Judeo-Christian Christianity, you know, the, the, the lion will be a symbol for Christ, you know, as, um, as in C.S. Lewis's uh, Chronicles of Narnia, he had the figure Aslan, you know, the, 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 the kingly lion, you know, which is undoubtedly from uh, the Turkish word that means lion, you know, and, um, but then the, the lion is also a symbol of, of uh, Satan who, who roams about like a, a, a roaring lion seeking whom to devour. And the symbols will be, will be very similar. So, but I mean, what, what, see, one thing that bothers me, this, it, this kind of thing, the Rielian cult, and if it was only one cult, it's got billions, got to have billions of dollars behind it. Mm -hmm. it, it it's, you know, major elements of, the military and industry and the intelligence community in many parts of the world are coming together with vast funding to make this religion be. Mm -hmm. And this religion will be the destruction of every one of the revealed religions. Mm -hmm. But I don't think any of the revealed religions, I think you could go to a rabbi and say, well, look at this, you know, these guys are going to destroy Judaism. You know, they're, 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 they're denying, you know, the unity of, of, uh, of Yahweh. They're denying that God is one, you know, the basic tenet of Judaism. And, you know, these are, they're, they're worshiping the pagan gods. They're worshiping the, the, the Babylonian Anunnaki, you know, and, and their rabbis and their people. And, and you know, and, and, and they're, they're getting some traction in the state of Israel about this. What are you guys going to do about it? And I say, oh, don't worry, young man or old man at this point. I'm still a young man in my own mind. Don't worry. It's okay. These people there have been crazy cults that come and go. They haven't. They haven't ever done anything bad, except for Shabbatai Zevi, perhaps. You know, who's <laughs> really seriously, you know, did a number on Judaism. But you know, the 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 the, the established religious authorities do not see this as a threat. Their threats, you know, that they have a, even a more secular view of what the threats. You know, of course, Israel is afraid. Of, of Iran, you know, or Israel is afraid of white supremacists or anti-Semites, you know, they're afraid of these things, which are, which are to be looked at and worried about by Jews, certainly, but 
the idea that a crazy cult like this or a number of crazy cults could come together and actually you know, um, make common cause with the most powerful forces so, so socially and economically in the world today, they just can't, they just can't get it. Mm. Well, we, we are the established, we've always been, you know, we're the established religion and in Judaism, it's us, you know, there's the reformed, there's the conservative, there's the, the, the orthodox, and, and that's Judaism. Well, what's this? This is something outside uh, our understanding, and it will have no effect. So that is the it, it's like, kind of like what happened with the gay lesbian queer phenomenon with the muslim world right so in the beginning it was like yeah. oh that's just like so far out we don't have to really worry about that yeah, yeah. then they're a special interest group they have money they have propaganda they got their movies and now you can hardly see a movie without a scene of some something yeah. funny there and 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 now it's sweeping the muslim kids uh yeah. and and so uh you know uh th this is the thing is that it is it's I think it's not about being a fringe group only. Uh, it is more about how fascist you are or 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 how much of a savior you can be. Yeah, well, I mean, speaking of fascist, I mean, the, the, this is the way people looked at Hitler. Hitler is a crazy fringe phenomenon, you know, you know, a bunch of, you know, you know, funny guys dressing up in in, in these uh, uniforms and and you know having these little rallies in, in which you know uh, fifty seven people appear and what's going to happen? And then nothing will come of this. And and the the the, the, the religions, all of them. I mean, the, the, this is like I, I've been tried to interest Christian exorcists in dealing with the UFO phenomenon. I'm saying this is a de demonic phenomenon, and they just say, "I'm sorry, I'm not." This is. You know, this is outside our uh, mm. our framework. You know, there, there's a father, Chad R Ripperger, who's actually says very interesting things about exorcism. He is an exorcist. He has um, he knows a lot about Catholic scholastic philosophy, which is very deep. And but he, I, I couldn't, you know, I couldn't get him to see that this is this is a major danger. He believes that the demons really haven't changed their tune much over the years, and they do a few things that demons do. They they possess people and then they have the same old names of, of the, of the uh, you know, Judeo-Christian demonology, uh, uh, Belphegor and Beelzebub, and they do this and then, uh, and, and he's got a little, he's got a little box. He's got a framework that he operates in. And I'm sure he does very well within that box. He does a, an important work if, if you can, if you can help people who are demonically possessed, but he can't see the large conspiratorial level of what the kingdom of the demons or the kingdom of the jinn is preparing mm. uh the one person in the christian world who did see that was c.s lewis mm. in his book uh the screw tape letters you know about this the screw tape letters no i never heard of it well the screw tape letters uh it's a it's a it's a short little book and it, it's it's humorous so just for my audience c.s lewis is one of the i think in a sense probably maybe the most profound a uh, Christian philosopher, would you say, at least in America, well, right? You know, in, of modern times, you know, he's in running to be the most profound. And he, he was, I mean, the, the, there are other philosophers and theologians who who in their are preeminent in, in their particular fields, but he he saw a bigger picture somehow. Mm -hmm. And you know, he 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 did completely popular things like like the Chronicles of Narnia, which which was his um uh, basically mythopoetic fairy tale, you know, a series of books. Um, he, he, he was uh, competing with uh, J.R.R. Tolkien, who, who did uh, the Lord of the Rings trilogy, because they were both in the same group of a literary group called the Inklings. And so he did, he did the, the Chronicles of Narnia, and then he did a science fiction series, that, one of which, uh, is is called that hideous strength, which is really an amazing fictionalized account of of the growth of, of what it would be like for the Antichrist to take over Britain. Mm -hmm. I mean, and it's it's he doesn't use the term Antichrist, but it's just so obvious that's that's what it is. And for him, the UFO aliens are beings called the macrobes, uh, which is like microbe, except yeah, macrobes, big, you know, <laughs> we're big macrobes. And this is the third of three 
Uh, it's, he has a, a science fiction trilogy. The first is Out of the Silent Planet. The second is Perilandra. And the third is that hideous strength. And that hideous strength, as, as uh, James Kutzinger, a, a perennialist writer who passed away a couple of years ago, uh, described it. He says, this is the reign of quantity and the signs of the times in fictional form. So maybe if you read that hideous strength, you'll get a better idea of how to read uh, the, the reign of quantity. It's just, it's, a, it's an amazing book. But anyway, uh, his book, the, the, the uh, screw tape letters, it's in the form, there's, a, there's an old, an old uh, experienced demon who's training a young demon in how to tempt people. And you know the young young demon ha has an assignment to tempt a particular person, you know, and and, and so you know he comes back and he says, well, well, I tried to tempt him, you know, to, to lust or I tried to tempt him to anger, and it, it worked for a while, and then it all fell apart. And what do I do? And and Screwtape says, well, you see, the approach should be blah blah blah, and it's very it's very humorous, you know, but in the process, Screwtape, the old demon talks about the plans of the demonic kingdom, or let's say mm -hmm. the kingdom of the gym, mm -hmm. what they were going, how, how they were working on collective attitudes to change yes. people's, you know, basic view of reality, you know, as part of, of the, their larger, uh, um, you know, agenda of temptation. And, and somehow that got into me and, and I realized, well, yes, I mean, why would the, the, the jinn are, are, are are pretty intelligent and 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 they, they have access to, to vast amounts of information and dimensions of reality that we don't have. And why would not the the, the faithless, the the unbelievers, the kafir among the jinn, why wouldn't they have a conspiracy, you know, or or an agenda or a plan to deal with uh, you know what 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 would happen to humanity as we get closer and closer to the coming of the hour? And, and, and human society is profoundly disrupted and, and, and our hold, as I say, on the human form itself mm -hmm. is getting jeopardized. And you, you think they wouldn't want to exploit that and have plans that they've been making of course. for a long period of time to exploit that? You know, so, so what you're seeing through this video can be seen from the standpoint of the other world. And if you want to look at things like this, how they would happen in the other world, the Lord of the Rings is, is a great story of how the, the, the same um, disorder and, and conflicts that, that, that are affecting the human race now are also taking place in the world of the jinn. I think that's what it's about. And, you know, there, there are different nations of the jinn who are fighting each other and all of this. And not, not to say that what Tolkien came up with is exactly correct in terms of who the nations are and what they're doing, but it gives you the feeling for them. And so so does uh, so does C.S. Lewis, and um, but 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 then you know once you accept that reality as 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 being there, w whether or not you, you you could actually claim to know the details of what's happening in that world, then you can look at things like this video video, and you're saying, well, they're talking about the return of the Elohim, who are the pagan gods, the Anunnaki, who are the jinn. And how much of this plan of theirs is not has not been hatched by the jinn in their own world and then channeled to their human agents in this world? Yes, you have to look at the point as 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 two worlds of evil working together to create uh, the, the framework for the for the coming of Al Dajjal. Yeah, and in fact, there's a verse of Quran that mentions this that your hun your the 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 jinn or the shalteen inspiring the humans uh there are plenty of verses but there's some places where it's very clear they do they didn't just inspire, inspire the humans to poetry which they they used to do you know yeah. in the, the time of ignorance they did that too actually a, a well-known american poet um james merrill was wrote a book that won the National Book Award called The Changing Light at Sandover, which was inspired or dictated by the Jinn. He was yeah. a gay guy and he and his lover lived, uh, you know, you know, somewhere on, on, on the eastern seaboard, I forget exactly where, and uh, they, they, uh, they used the Ouija board. And through the Ouija board, they, they were able to, uh, James Merrill was able to write The Changing Light at Sandover, which became a major 
work of poetry, uh, you know, of American poetry. So, so that's still going on. But really, things like things like computers, you know, that we're using right now, and we're probably using a technology that was in part inspired by the gym, because it, it gives them more of a scope for operation in this world to have an internet, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay, inshallah. Of the extraterrestrial visiting the planet. Here are the elevation, or the elevation for the same angle with a section. Uh, up to this day, Jacques Isaac came with this design, this design well known, who has lasted more than 30 years up to today. The white donuts, the way I call it, with a three ping pong ball in the front and in the back, joined by tunnels. And here, I'm going to present you a more defined approach and architectural approach of this design. To better understand blueprint, best to go directly in 3D. So here's a presentation. You can see in 3D, the slab foundation of the building, the 1,000 acre of 70 square meter slab foundation. It is to me way much more clear, and I think it is the work of people to understand when you come in 3D. You can see better the level. Here are the vertical access and elevator. As you can see, there is four of them in the center of livable space, the quarter of the extraterrestrial, because they need yeah. to access to their landing pad. We could move level on, on level two. From, yeah, one. from the detailed plans here, because this, this is interesting, but you know, this is technical stuff that only has to do about the plans for the building. We get the idea. They're going to do this amazing, you know, complex of buildings that will be the center of everything. <laughs> yeah. Everything of, of yeah. the world of the world government and of uh the intelligence yeah the throne, the throne of antichrist will be in there somewhere all right Steve, please go ahead let's see what an amazing project and all so much needed but whatever the project perhaps the more important the project the more important the process we have a well understood well followed process uh, that minimizes the likelihood of problems. It, you know, with the number of people in this, I mean, like the embassy project, all this, this is like very well coordinated, it seems. Oh, yes. And, you know, there's a lot of money behind this. And yeah, it's coordinated. And it, it's funny, you know, uh, th this this degree of, of organization, like I say, I, I don't think it will take this form, but none of this is wasted in terms of the larger plan. So Yeah, and once they've invested so much money and you know it creates noise and things move on it doesn't end up where they thought but you know it might be another set of people doing something similar I yeah guess. or maybe they know this one i don't know maybe they know or somebody knows this isn't the way it's finally going to be but this this is a you know one of the bricks in, in the building so. and so on uh and that process here Project definition. What, how do I fully understand the project? And then usually from. I'm just going to forward a little bit. But after each of your arrival, it will be the hottest destination of all time. Benefits no to the host com country. This embassy. I mean, they're selling this, they're marketing this. And that would justify building a new city nearby, and much, much bigger than a single science institute. We call that, that city tentatively Scientopolis. So the big question, of course, is how much. Maybe, maybe Latvia would do it or something, you know? Yeah. <laughs> And of course, it's pretty easy to arrive. So here you have cultural tourism. Oh, look at that. They have Mecca, Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. Pyramids of Giza. Oh, this is the number of people that go there. Okay, I get it. So they're yeah, trying to like... So they all stop going to these places and, and, and go to go to this embassy instead, I guess. Yeah. Well, you have to... You make it a, a big Las Vegas where you, where you have replicas of the pyramids and replicas of of, of uh you know the uh the mosque at, at, at mecca and the kaaba and replicas of these different things you don't have to you know run around the world you can just go to one place shalom and thank you all for attending this wonderful lecture thank you daniel and all your team for this great project that we will achieve very soon i hope it will be in israel but anyways if it's not in israel it will be elsewhere but it will be a pity if the people of the book the people of the Tanakh, the people who have all the proofs here, and they can show it to anyone. The Elohim are an extraterrestrial civilization, and not a single God. And anytime, to any of you, I have all the citations. 
whenever you want. I have many lectures that you can visualize and it, they will be sent to you upon request. Now, unfortunately, if Israel doesn't accept, as I mentioned with the very sad, with a lot of sadness and very, uh, a lot of sorrow, Israel will be destroyed because they have no reason to exist if they don't accept the Elohim, who are the ones they're praying for. This is an image that Aaron just present that we have. It has been given to the all rabbis and all prime ministers and members of the Israeli Knesset. Echleat Silet Israel, how to save Israel? Because now we're not requesting just this land. They should give it to us. They should give it to the last messenger of the Elohim, the Mashiach, right? Why? Because they're not doing us a favor if they give this land. The Mashiach and the people behind him are doing a favor to Israel to save the country of Israel, to save the Jewish people. And this is the main reason the Mashiach is among us and to save the entire humanity. Because the way we're going right now, we have 99.5% chances to auto-distract ourselves. So please take the books, read them, understand and consult. Don't just be narrow-minded and just reject what we're saying. Because either you like it or not, the Elohim are going to come back. And with you, oh, without don't you, be we're going to Don't be intelligent and logical and all of that. No, no, no. We don't want that. <laughs> well, I mean, what was that image? Was that Lot's wife turned into a pillar of salt or something? I what think was that? that was the state of Israel going into water. I think that's, well, that's yeah, that's the state of Israel is 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 being crowned. Yeah. Whereas if if once once the Elohim or the Anunnaki come back, they will bust Iran, man. Don't worry about that. They will take care of Iran. So I will let the, the technical team get it for one of the members, I believe. Another Galut that we say in Hebrew, which means another diaspora. And the Jewish people, the state of Israel will be lost forever for the Jewish people. That's, you know, they're working on fear, right? Yeah, I mean, it, fear, fear blinds people. And, you know, I mean, the, this is what you see with uh, Elon Musk, you know? I mean, if, if we can't go to Mars, you know, that will be the end of the human race. That will save the human race. All the things that people are saying will save the human race now are insane. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, literally, I mean, clinical mental illness, engineered, collective, clinical mental illness, out of touch with reality, clueless, lost it completely. And this is being engineered. The question is, can you engineer a mass psychosis and not ultimately grow crazy yourself. I don't think it's possible. It's an interesting question. Let me see. Remain confidential? They don't want to have any pressure from the government or to be uh, disturbed by uh, political uh, leaders. They just want to keep it secret for now. But as I said, even if we found the land and we're able to buy it, the state of Israel must give this piece of land to build a third temple. Otherwise, Israel have no reason to exist. Is, is that, that a warning or a threat? Because of all the threats, all the wars, all the conflicts around the world, to meditate for peace. To meditate for peace at least once a day. Think about love, think about peace, to influence this planet, not to utterly stop ourselves, because we're, we're very close. Part of this, and you can probably comment on this, but it, it seems to me, based upon some things that I read, that you know, part of the um, narrative here is, or maybe it will be at some point that, you know, humanity has destroyed itself. We've gone to the brink of war for, let's say, the first time, second time, third time. Uh, we're in so many conflicts and now they've been forced to come down and deal with humanity because ha if yeah. they don't come down, then, you know, and so we relinquish all power to them. And because. Yes, that's right. The question is, once they come down, how are they going to appear? You know, I mean, uh I suppose we have to wait un until something like a plausible alien can be created through genetic engineering or surgery or something like that. You know, that's, that's one way. And, <coughs> and holographic images are another way. How are they going to appear? You know, there's a, there's a narration of the prophet about the Jal in which the prophet says that when Jesus, he will see Jesus, he will melt. And then the prophet continues, and then he will go and kill him with his sword. 
the point I'm trying to make here is that it seems like he has two components. The, the melting component, which is seems like a jinn aspect to him. And then the physical body, uh, which will be like a jasad, uh, like a, something devoid of a, a true human spirit. A something golem. like, yeah, yeah, like an AI mixed with human genes. Yeah, yeah, one of those things. One of or, those things. Or a chimera, yes. chimera, yeah. or one of those, yeah. I think we saw enough. Uh, I don't, you know, I don't think he's going to say anything more significant. But I just thought that was a, and 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 you know what's happening with the cows, the five cows that they now got. Yeah. Uh, I might do a separate video on that. But when you add all of this together, the timing, the 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 level of noise, the 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 spin, and the narrative that's been created, and all these agencies international agencies talking on this and under all of that which most people are not seeing that but what they do see is the abrahamic accords the day-to-day -day politics yeah so it, it seems to all take a very everything is just flipping upside down really i yeah, mean everything well, I mean, you know, we're seeing the regime of antichrist being built right here this is how it's going to go I, I, I think the UFO religion is finally a plausible, I mean, you could say that they're working toward a one world religion, but they'll never be able to do that well, but they can do this. This is going to be the one world religion because it, you know, it includes our whole belief in science, which of course we're starting to lose now, but you know, there's, it's still, there's still a lot of belief in science or in what science claims to be. And yeah. So, uh, it's interesting. What does it mean? Uh, you know that 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 we can see the development of the regime of Al Tajal so clearly. What does that? What are we supposed to do about? It? Well, we can do what you and I are doing right now. Talk about it. Point that out. You know, but you know, all right. You know, Jesus is going to slay or melt whatever, uh, Al Dajjal. So if Al Dajjal is getting closer, which he obviously is, then the return of the prophet Jesus is also getting close. The question in my mind, which I'm not going to answer in any simple way, is can we put ourselves in line with that, with that, you know, re re return of the true Messiah who is to destroy the Antichrist? And how would we do that? You yeah, know, uh, um, I would like to offer something that I've been saying as part of the solution, because this is a very large topic, which, yeah. but the first one is fatua, which is true chivalry, manhood. Uh, the return of the rijalullah, the men of Allah, the chivalry. Number two is jama'ah. You have to be in a jama'ah with an amir, with bayah true Islamic brotherhood, true Islamic fraternity. Uh, and number three, hijrah outside the cities. And to establish an Islamic model. And I know that seems to a lot of people like that's very hard to do, but I don't see us surviving with true Iman in the cities for very long either. It, it's going to be all very chaotic. Yeah. And you know that, that's that's understandable. That's understandable. I mean, of course, my experience was something uh, vaguely reminiscent of that was the hippie commune movement. You know, and there was it was an attempt to renounce the world, to renounce the dunya. We don't want to play by the by the game of the dunya. They didn't have a clear religious or or prophetic framework, you know, to stand against the dunya. But at least they knew how they, they knew how to say no, but they didn't know what to say yes to, or they said, mm -hmm. said yes to a number of crazy, contradictory, chaotic things that finally, you know, basically destroyed that movement. But one thing I did see is the danger of you think you have left the dunya behind and and you're now now someplace that is more pure and you're living in a rural environment. And you say all of that is out, you know, is, is back in the city, all the evils back in the city, whereas within our circle, there's only good and truth. But this may not be 
It's so easy to say because I say, but you're absolutely right because every single attempt that I've seen for people to do hijra and leave outside, they couldn't get along. Yeah. Oh, well, all, all of all of the of, of the problems of the dunya you bring with you because why? They're the problems of the nafs. The nafs is the collective projection. I mean, the dunya is the collective pr projection of the nafs. I you mean, may leave is... the outer projection, but the nafs is still there. And I think that is the most important thing in a sense that if you don't have people with proper tarbiya and you're in a stressful environment out there, right? You're not in your normal comfort zone and you're out there and, yeah. you know, your wife is upset, your children are upset, you're in a new environment, you're dealing with families that you never got to really know, you yeah. didn't really form bonds with them. These are the things that I've seen that come up that from what I've seen in Islamic organizations and many of the organizations that did try to leave the cities. But in two, three, four years, 10 years time, they all dwindle. Yeah. And instead of becoming like a true brotherhood. And that is a real concern that when you... Yeah, and, and so it, it, that may be a very important um, thing to do, but... but... I mean, for me, okay, I'm 73, I'm probably, you know, and my wife is a Christian, and I'm probably not going to end up in, in a Muslim community in a rural area, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to sit right here, and so what I have to deal with is how to protect myself spiritually. I don't think it's necessary to be in a Muslim community, even if you're in a good Christian community. Yeah. It could work. Well, yeah, I mean, and the Christian, there's a question. Now, now the Amish have been able to do their thing for a long time. Which is know? something that needs to be properly studied. Yeah. Uh, I think, uh, in a sense, I don't know what you would feel about that, but I feel in some ways the Amish have, have been the smartest in the long run. Well, I mean, it, I don't, and of course, I don't know the problems. that There, there are these, you know, uh, you know, scandals or exposés of what's really going on in, the, in the, the, the weird Amish, you know. Well, I'm sure there are, there are a lot of problems, but those problems can't be new, and, and, and they have survived for, for a long time, you know. So, so you know, um, yeah, so, so it, it, it's, 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 something, it's something to think about, and... Um, my question, you know, for me is, is how, how can I purify my soul to the point or how with Allah's help, can I allow him to purify my soul, my nafs to the point where uh, it doesn't have those open doors to the dunya and to the effects of the dunya? Because the dunya only affects you through your nafs. If your nafs is truly submitted to God, you can go anywhere, you can be in any environment and uh, it's not going to affect you, but there are very few people about whom that can be said. So, you know, it's, it, it's a strategy. And of course, Christian monasticism, the, uh, you know, the Christian monasteries are not in good shape. You know, a lot of, I, I look at, we, we have a monastery here, a monastery of Gethsemane, which is where Thomas Merton was from. And, uh, you know, it's 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 been here for quite a while. You know, this part of Kentucky is is like the old Catholic Kentucky. You know, you you think of, of the South as being you know heavily Protestant and Baptists mm -hmm. and stuff, but you know, th this is the proto cathedral. The first Catholic cathedral west of the Alleghenies is here, is in Bardstown, which is very close to where Ge uh, Abbey of Gethsemane is. But what you had with Gethsem Gethsemane. I mean, it, it, it was it was growing when Thomas Merton was there. A lot of people, you know, it was like after World War II and people said we need a spiritual renewal and the Catholics said we have to get back to, to, to the, the monasteries, which are in some ways the, 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 the center of Catholic spirituality, which is certainly the way traditionally Islam has looked at them, you know. And uh, but now it's dwindled away. There are only a few old men. And the way they survive, because we used to go there, my wife and I, uh, before COVID, and meditate for a couple of hours every once in a while in their church, which you could just walk in and do. Uh, and they're old. And the way they survive is by becoming an interfaith retreat center. Mm -hmm. You know, and which is not, I mean, they, they, they had, I don't know if they have the Dalai Lama, but they had, maybe they did, but they had uh, you know, some Tibetan Lamas out. 
Now, Thomas Merton, it's an interesting guy because he, he made connections with a lot of different spiritual groups, which was very interesting in exp expanding to, you know, to, to the horizons of Catholicism. But at the same time, he, he was losing his own grip on his tradition. Uh, you know, he, uh, he made connections with the Tibetan Buddhists, with the Dalai Lama, with uh, Eastern Orthodox Christians, with Qadiri, Qadiri uh, uh, Fukara from, from North Africa. And he, you know, he wrote, wrote things about all these people. And uh, it's very interesting, but it, it, it was showing the Catholic tradition becoming weaker and that the kind of things, thing that becomes the Abrahamic Accords a little farther down the line. Where you know, I mean, every every tradition that that has its own revelation from Allah has got to say at one point, well, whatever the other religions are doing, this is enough for us. This is what He gave to us. This is what we will stay um, faithful to. And and if they say, well, you know, we've got part of the truth. You know, Christianity is partly true, but we can get something from Islam. They've got some good stuff too, and the Buddhists have got some good stuff, and we'll learn from them. It seems so so liberal and, and expansive and friendly, but it, it just it just shows that the tradition is is dying, you know. I wonder if there's a direct correlation between interfaith and weakness of tradition. D yeah, direct. I remember Houston Smith, let's see, it was Houston Smith and Sayyid Hussein Nazir were speaking at uh, one of the uh, churches in Berkeley. And Houston mm -hmm. Smith was speaking and he said, you know, the Graduate Theological Union, um, which is a consortium of seminaries and religious schools, uh, one Dominican, I think one Franciscan and among the Catholics, some Protestant ones, a Unitarian one, Presbyterian one. And it's a consortium of schools that's sort of related to University of California because it's in the same area. Although there's one near where I grew up in Marin County, uh, San Francisco Theological Seminary, which is uh, Presbyterian, but he said, what you're getting in, in, in GTU, Graduate Theological Union now, is that uh, people want to be ministers, but they don't want to be ministers of any particular religion. Mm. They want to be interfaith ministers. Wow. And then, and, and the next, the next, uh, and, and he said, so, so, you know, the, the GTU is sold to the churches down the river, as he put it, you know, and then the, the next thing was, was that um, uh, Hamza Yusuf's uh, Zatuna Institute moved in, it didn't quite become, uh, you know, officially one of the Graduate Theological Union schools, although it may have by now, I haven't been following, but it's, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, associated with them very closely. So you say, well, and, and now uh, the Graduate Theological Union schools are becoming not, not just pan-Christian, but, but, you know, are, are the Tibetan Buddhists going to have a school there? Is it, you know, it's, it's, it's becoming an interfaith institution slowly. And um, if that happens, how can anyone be intensively committed to their own path, to their own revelation, to their own religion. You know, because, you know, the next next weekend, you know, the the the, the Tibetan Lama is going to speak, or next, you know, next Sunday the Sufi is going to speak. And when it's we go around and it's very interesting, we learn, but you never get to the point of following your way. It's as if you're still trying to decide what religion you want to choose. In the back of your mind, you you, you know that you don't have to choose any of them because they're all available to you. Apparently, mm -hmm. you can just take a little from each and 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 supposedly live your spiritual life like that. And that's that weakens the religions terribly. All of them. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, Khayt, inshallah. So we will meet if Allah wills next week. Yes. Thank you very that's, much for that's your a fascinating video. I'm going to send the uh, link of that to the Chabad people in town and, and and I'm going to phone them up. I'm going to say, look, there's a terrible attack on Judaism that, that has come. It's it's worse that, that, than the anti-Semites, you know, uh, un, 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 unless unless they get to the point of doing another Holocaust. But before they get there, this is worse that, than what the white supremacists, the anti-Semites are doing. This is bad. This could this could destroy your Judaism from within. You got to look at this. Tell me what you think. And I, I wonder, I just want to see what they say. Yeah. That would be interesting. Yeah.
All right. Thank you so much. Jazakumullah khair. Inshallah. May Allah increase for you. Inshallah. I mean, and I think you raised the most important points at the end, which is, okay, all this is happening. Alhamdulillah, we can see it. But what to do? That's that's where what every Muslim should be thinking. But unfortunately, I think Muslims in the West in particular and the Middle East and in other places, you know, we're so so stuck in the rat race. And uh, I think this next generation is because of COVID, not going to school, and just this next generation is like a complete zombie to reality in a sense. And so... Yeah, so, so, so you know, to be, to be a, a non-zombie in a world of zombies is kind of stressful. Because, <laughs> you know, because it, the, the, the jihad, to a certain degree, is simply to resist what the dunya is trying to turn us into. That, that, that could take all our resources, you know, of spiritual warfare just to resist becoming a zombie. And if, that's, if that takes all your resources and if that's the fight that has been presented to you, then more power to you in that fight. That's the one you're supposed to be doing. You know, mm -hmm. rather than thinking about how do we change the world? Hey, you know, how do, you, how do we pre pre prevent the world from changing us? That's the first That's step. Yeah, yeah, really. Yeah, subhanAllah. That's a very good point. Okay. Thank you so much. Jazakumullah khairan. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaykum salam.